Okay, we had uh, done some basic discussion about the micro machined silicon accelerometers and we continue the case studies in this lecture and what we plan to do will be the topics for discussion are steady state and dynamic performance of accelerometers. Then we will discuss bulk micro machined accelerometers with differential capacitance sensing facility. We finally, take up surface micro machined capacitive accelerometer, accelerometer with force balance configuration. These are the main topics today. Now, we have already defined sensitivity and to reiterate what I said earlier, the accelerometer consists of spring mass combination and when the mass is mass experiences a force, it in this direction it moves by distance x. When it moves by distance x, the force restoring force exerted by the spring is k into x and the force experienced by the mass is mass into acceleration. So, k is the spring constant which depends upon the dimensions of that uh, spring that you are using. If you are a be beam, we have it is E is the Young's modulus, W is the width of the beam, H is the thickness of the beam, L is the length of the beam. So, longer beams are more flexible and shorter beams are, are uh, you know more less flexible. Similarly, thicker films are less less flexible. Okay. So, here under steady state condition the force is mass into acceleration that is a force experienced by the mass equal to k into x that is the restoring force. So, the sensitivity is the displacement x divided by acceleration. So, x by a is m by k. You can see that the x can be used as a measure of acceleration because both m and k are known quantities. In fact, you can calibrate x versus acceleration usually all this uh, accelerometers will be calibrated uh, by initially before it is uh, made available commercially. So, displacement x is a measure of sensitivity, higher mass results in higher sensitivity because x by a for a given acceleration x will be more if mass is more if the swing constant is fixed. Similarly, if the swing constant is higher okay, and m is fixed, m by k is uh, m by k is smaller which means the displacement smaller. So, higher swing constant less sensitive, higher mass more sensitive. Okay, now, let us see uh, just take some examples. I have taken three structures called u z 1, u z 2 and u z 3. These are this is the accelerometer structure that we have discussed last time. It has a membrane square mass plate supported by four beams like this in a, in a sort of first connection. Now, the comparing the sizes all the three masses have Okay, all the three masses have same thickness 10 micron. T mass is 10 micron or three cases and the beam thickness H is 20 micron in all the cases. But what is varied is either the mass or the spring length. So, comparing u z 1 and u z 3, you can see L length of the beam is the same in both u z 1 and u z 3 1.15 millimeter, whereas the edge size of this mass in the u z 3 is 0.52 millimeter and in the u z 1 it is 1 millimeter. So, what it implies is the first accelerometer is same as second third one except that mass is almost double compared to the 
third one. So, you can see that for a x by a will be larger in the case of first one compared to third one. And if you compare second one and third one, both are same in mass size, but the spring is smaller in the case of v z 2. That means, it is the uh, it is less flexible. So, the sensitivity of v z 2 will be smaller compared to v z 3. So, what you can see is v z 1 is the highest sensitivity because it is larger than v z 3 because of higher mass and v z 3 is has higher sensitivity compared to v z 2 because spring is longer here more flexible. So, you can see that highest u z 3, u z 1, next is u z 3, next is u z 2. So, this is the simulation by ANSYS using to find the deflection. Deflection is x, okay. deflection versus acceleration g, c u z c it is almost linear for even up to about 14 g acceleration due to gravity uh, which is standard value which you all of us know. 980 grams per centimeter. Uh, 980 acceleration is uh, centimeter per second square. Okay, 980 or 9.8 meter per second square. So for even for 14g from 1 to 14 is linear. U z 1 is highest sensitivity. U z 3 is next. U z 2 is least because the spring is very small here. Here the spring is large. Uh, mass is very large. Okay. Now, let us see the dynamic analysis of or dynamic operation of the accelerometer. The steady state condition we saw that the mass the force is equal to mass into acceleration steady, steady state condition. That means, the applied force is that value which ultimately gives equal to mass into acceleration. But, when the mass begins to experience the force, it takes a while to come to steady state or sometimes the force will be time varying. So, then the force is given by m into d squared x by d t squared that is actually the increase uh, the acceleration plus there is another parameter called the damping parameter which I described last time which uh, comes into picture okay, which actually prevents the movement of the mass the way it likes because it is like a current flowing through a resistor. The, okay, the, there is a drop in the resistor. Similarly, here when the mass experiences this damping due to the air in between the in the plate and the bottom. For example, here the plate and bottom there is an electrode or a frame. So, between those two there will be air or when it moves there will be air damping. So, because of that and this air damping will be more if the velocity is more. So, that is air damping will be proportional to the velocity which is d x by d t. So, b into d x by the b is a proportionality constant b into d x by d t is the force due to damping and k into x is the restoring force. Okay. So, you have got this is the rate of change of velocity mass into d squared x by d t squared, second term is the damping force, third one is the restoring force due to the spring and that is applied force. Now, you to get the dynamic situation you must solve this equation using Laplace transforms you can say x see here I will divide uh, find out x divided by acceleration. Okay. I can write it as I divide this entire thing by m then x s divided by a of s will be standard to find out the differential equation this is represent the equation for uh, actually filter. So, m into d squared x by d s squared. So, I divide by m. Okay. So, x displacement divided by a will be 1 divided by s squared plus b by m. I am dividing by m 
into d x by d t by s I represent by s k by m, m I am dividing right to k by m ok, s is not there here. This is uh, proportional to x. So, this from Laplace transform all of us know that x by acceleration is 1 by this quantity. I can write it as s squared plus if I write k by m as omega naught squared, I can write b by m as omega naught by q, where q is omega naught m by b. So, I can replace here q by omega naught m by b, that will turn out to be q by omega naught is that quantity. Okay. So, what we are, I am not writing anything new other than the second order differential equation. So, this would represent a, a equivalent of a series resonance circuit R L C circuit. In R L C circuit, this will be the x by a similar term will be this term will be s square plus omega naught by q. Okay, omega naught is the resonance frequency plus omega naught square. In R L C circuit, omega naught square will be one by uh, square root of one by L C. So m is equivalent of an inductor, k is equivalent of one by capacitance. Okay. So, the quality factor is in a, in a q of a resonance circuit is omega L by R or omega naught L by R. L is equivalent of or mass is equivalent of inductor, B is inductor uh, equivalent of resistor. So, you can see this performance of this is similar to RLC circuit. You can then expect that if I plot x versus uh, acceleration or x versus frequency, I will get a x by a if I plot versus or displacement versus frequency, then you will for a given acceleration you will see a resonance. So, you also define other terms like damping ratio which is zeta is 1 by 2 q. This is a standard definition in a uh, RLC circuit also the damping ratio is 1 by 2 q, q is omega L by R same as this replace L by m, replace R by b. Now, you can see that sensitivity is x by a equal to m by k. Okay. Higher the mass, more it is sensitive. Higher the k, less is the sensitivity. Now, you can see the resonance frequency omega naught is square root of k by m. Higher the k, higher the frequency. Therefore, if sensitivity is higher, m by k is higher and k by m is lower. So, the accelerometers which show higher sensitivity will show lower resonance frequency. So, if you want to decide, your, you will have to in the design have a compromise between the sensitivity and the frequency. So, you can see if I make that frequency very, very low or if I am sensing very low frequencies like the earthquake, seismic frequency, seismic frequency, okay, then k by m will be small that means, m by k will be large, you can have very high sensitivity. You can use big mass for getting high sensitivities. Okay. So, depending upon the application, you will use your approach. The approach will determine whether you want to have a big mass or small mass bigger mass for low frequency and high sensitivity, smaller mass for higher frequency may be lower sensitivity. You can use amplifier for that. Okay. So, damping various resistance or various resistance is provided by trapped air or gas around the proof mass when it moves. Okay. Now, let us go back, go further. So, this is the damping which comes prevents the spring from moving in the direction an entire equation governing this is the dynamic equation. You can solve it, get the step response, frequency response and everything. Okay. Now, just to sum up what I said, spring mass system, mechanical system is equivalent to RLC circuit. M in that system, M is equivalent of inductor L. The equation is a second order difference equation governing L, R and C. Here, the resistance is governing instead of L, R, C, B, M and 1 by K. 
Okay. So, these two are equivalents. You can use a size simulator to simulate such a system. Because it is a RLC circuit. Omega naught is root k by m and in the RLC circuit omega naught is root 1 by L c. And quality factor q is omega naught m by b and the quality factor in this other case is omega naught l by r because m and r are equivalent. Okay. Now, let us just take a look at the some of the parameters. So, as we already defined sensitivity is one of the most important parameters that is displacement divided by acceleration which is decided by m by k ratio okay? and swing constant is decided by the dimensions of the beam that you are using. Okay? In fact, uh, I have used this term T and H alternatively response frequency is root k by m. Okay. Response fre omega naught is response frequency into 2 pi. Bandwidth is one fifth of the usable range. We will see wha what it means actually. You want to operate the system in the region where the sensitivity is independent of frequency. So, that for all the frequencies of vibration of the accelerometer, you get the same sensitivity. Damping factor, I have not derived this, it will depend upon the coefficient of viscosity, if it is air that is a number, then the gap between the mass and the uh, bottom plate, okay, because after all when the mass moves like that down, you will have the air gap. So, smaller the gap, more smaller the gap, okay, more will be the force exerted on the mass, preventing it moving. So, the resistance will be more or the damping will be more if the gap is smaller. And B is the, if I take the mass of that size uh, like that, L okay, L into B, B, B is the width, L is the length, L B cubed is the proportional to that. So, more bigger size, if the mass is bigger, when it moves like that, there is more air trapped in between. So, it is more, it become, it prevents the movement more difficult. If it is smaller, the movement of air will be uh, little distance it has to move. So, that is why the damping factor B depends upon the, again the dimensions of the mass and the gap. Damping ratio of course, is uh, uh, 1 by 2 q, where q is the quality factor, omega not m by B is the q. Okay. So, now let us go further. The, if you solve that equation, which is the second order differential equation, this equation, if you solve for a step input, okay, depending upon the value of the critical damping ratio, the, if you get give a step input, if it is critical damping, zeta equal to 1, where zeta is actually 1 by 2 q, q is omega naught m by b. So, that will just very quickly it will come back to this steady state value that is step input is 1, that will come to that value. Whereas, if the damping is small under damped, it is like RLC circuit, it will go beyond that steady state value because it moves much quickly and it will come back to that, it will oscillate and after a long time it will come to steady state. Okay. If r is not present, it may not even come to steady state, it will keep on oscillating, undamped oscillation. If zeta is more than 1, that is over damped. So, it takes much longer time, it does not oscillate, but it will take much longer time to come to the steady state value. Okay. So, that is under damped, critically damped, over damped. Now, let us see the frequency response using ANSI study. The same structure which we discussed for sensitivity, we will see. We saw, if you remember, just I will go back to the quickly and come back. See, here we saw this one has highest sensitivity, used one. 
user 3 has the nest sensitivity, user 2 has the least sensitivity. From our discussion, you, you can immediately tell that this must have the lowest frequency re response frequency, this will have the next higher frequency response frequency, this will be the highest fre response frequency. Okay, let us see that. That is because of the dimensions. So, for this dimension, the k is given by spring constant of this spring is given by Young's modulus into the width which is 50 microns into h thickness cubed divided by l, l is that 1.15 millimeter. Everything you express in MKS unit mass in kilograms and linear dimensions in meters, you do that k will be in newtons per meter. So, you when you use this equation frequency is 1 by 2 pi root of k by m, you use all of them in MKS units. Then you will get this k is 49.97 newtons per meter and mass is this area which is 1.5 uh, I am sorry 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter that is 10 to power of minus 3 into 10 to power of minus 3 meter square into thickness thickness is 10 microns 10 into 10 to power minus 6 meters okay. that is the volume density is 2330 kilograms per meter cube or 2.33 grams per centimeter cube. So, when you do that you get a mass equal to 2.33 into 10 to the power minus 8 kilograms we are expressing in kilograms. So, the frequency response frequency for this is square root of k by m okay, you get 7.3 you, you can see that I used 4 see E w h cube by 4 l cube is the spring constant of one beam like that. For a one beam, k is E w h cube by 4 l cube. There are four beams supporting this mass. So, rigidity is increased four times. So, spring constant will be four times. That is 4 into the spring constant of one swing or one beam gives you this quantity. That is why this 4. So, when you do that, you get substitute for that. This k is the total value. At this in, the, in this formula if I use I get 7.37 kilo, uh, kilohertz. In fact, you can see that this matches with very closely with the one simulated with the ANSYS slightly below 8 kilohertz. Okay? So, that is the bigger mass biggest mass with the longest beam. beam. Now, I will go to use at 3 which has the same length, but the mass is smaller. Okay, by a factor of 2 that is m is 4 times smaller. Okay. So, here you can see m is 4 times smaller the frequency will be root of that times increase that is about double. So, if you get there 7 I should get something like a 14. So, you see the same formula we can see here that the u z 3 has got a mass which is smaller 2.33 and here it is 0.63 one fourth of that mass is smaller and k in both cases is 49.97. So, the ratio or the frequency resonance frequency is using the same formula it is 14.17 which is actually double that it double that because mass is 4 times smaller. Okay. Mass is 4 times smaller, so frequency is twice larger. Let us see compared to z 1. z 2 you can see comparing these two z 2 and z 3 mass is same for both, but k in this case is 0 0.6 u z 2 that is smaller l is smaller. So, k is larger. Okay. So, you can expect the frequency to be higher. Come in user 3, it is 1.15 and here it is 0.6, almost half. So, it will be about 2 root 2 times higher the frequency compared to this. So, you get that 14.7 into 2 root 2 is that. 
So, you get about 35 kilohertz as the resonance frequency. So, this is to show that whatever you calculate with the analytical expressions your k and m and estimate the resonance frequency practically matches with the resonance frequency. What you have to note is in all these cases you can see the I will take one example the def def deflection or the sensitivity is practically constant in this frequency range. If I take this about 7.3 kilohertz as resonance frequency, you will operate the accelerometer somewhere here, one fifth of that. Okay, that will be about one one about here somewhere here. In this range, you will use where the deflection is constant for various frequencies because your acceleration may be over a certain frequency range from well, very low frequency up to one kilohertz. So, the bandwidth of this will be somewhere, somewhere here. Whereas, if you take the higher frequency one, okay, where the resonance frequency is about 35, I can use it right up to about 10 kilohertz frequency because the sensitivity or deflection is constant. So, you need to operate the accelerometer in this range. So, your design should be such that what is your bandwidth? Here, the bandwidth may be 1 by 1 fifth of this 37, that is about 7 kilohertz okay. and then the sensitivity will be that much. You can see if I go for lower frequency by making the mass large, see you can see here it is somewhere 0.025 not, not 0.025 uh, 0.02 or so whereas, in the case of z 1 that is less than 0 0.1 much smaller okay. mass is larger. Okay. I am sorry the, the in this case frequency is higher, sensitivity is low. In the other case, we said one frequency is lower, sensitivity is higher and range is also reduced here. Here, the range is increased. This is the general idea about the accelerometer. The key points that I would like to emphasize is the bandwidth is about one fifth of the resonance frequency. Resonance frequency is higher if the beam is shorter and mass is smaller, but the sensitivity is smaller if the resonance frequency is higher. Okay. Now, let us go into let us go into some of the differential capacitance accelerometers. Okay. Here, <coughs> I have shown I have mentioned as I mentioned if you want higher sensitivity and lower frequency your mass must be higher. In that case it is better to use thicker masses. Okay. So, bulk micro machine structures are used this thing is the silicon <coughs> you release this mass by that is a wafer which was there originally you etch out in this portion center portion to reduce the thickness in this region that will be a beam and all round the mass all round the mass. Okay you will etch a groove all around the mass and the mass is like that. Groove is etched all around that is all around the groove is etched and the mass is held by means of the spring to the main body. So, that this mass can move like that and you can see the other side of the part of this uh, part of the this thing because here there is a groove here you will see some portion of silicon on this side made frame that is what you see here. So, you can use this has a differential capacitor because this is the mass is one plate and glass can be bonded analytically which you would have you have discussed earlier anodic bonding of glass on silicon here. I am not going through technology of that I am giving you final structure there will be metal contact here metal contact here how you take the connection out I have not described here, but this is a schematic diagram. So, this mass is the one which can move up or down depending upon the force that it experiences. Supposing it is gets deflected up, then the gap, gap between the top electrode black here, the field electro fixed electrode and the mass goes down, capacitance goes up. The capacitance between the bottom electrode and this mass will decrease because the mass moves up therefore, the capacitance between the two decreases. Now, you can actually make use of this type of two capacitors by applying a voltage plus v to this and minus v to this one 
plus p to the top electrode minus p to the bottom electrode, then the voltage at the center will be C 1 minus C 2 divided by C 1 plus C 2 into V. So, if C 1 equal to C 2, the voltage at this position is 0. Now, when it deflects up, C 1 minus C 2 goes up, there will be voltage developed here. Okay? If, so, you can make use of that voltage uh, electronically sensitive, we will see later, apply a certain voltage to electrostatically push it backward. Find out how much you apply, in fact, this will become clearer when you go through the entire analysis of that. So, what you do is when it this deflects up, apply voltage to this electrode with respect to the other electrode or with respect to ground, so that the mass moves down back to the original position. How much voltage applied to push it back is a measure of the force experienced by the mass, because it has moved up due to the inertial force. You use electrostatic force to pull it down. When the okay, when the electrostatic force is equal to the inertial force, it has come back to the neutral position. So you can measure the electrostatic force, which is a measure of the applied force. The advantage of that is you can use this for uh, the wide range of uh, uh, wide range of accelerations because even at high accelerations the deflection will be minimal because you are applying electro electrostatic force continuously to push it back. So, okay. This is silicon and glass, but some problems are there with glass and silicon because of bit of thermal mismatch, stress etcetera. So, you can make the all the three layers by silicon like this. This is a silicon sample wafer in which you have used bulk micro machining technique can see this shape is because of the K O H etching from top side and bottom side. What you do is first you etch a depression which is about 2 microns and then from both sides and then dope these portions where the beam should come, dope them very heavily with boron so that it would not get etched by K O H. So, protecting all the other portions, etch this portion using K O H. So, you etch the groove all the way by using K O H. I am not going through technology, but the structure will be obtained because you etch all the way down through this with this K O H etching the groove, but this portion will not get attacked by K O H because this is heavily do heavily doped with boron that is etched top. So, there are 1, 2, 3 and similarly on the back side of this 4. So, that mass will be held by means of if this is a mass, it will be held like that on both sides on the from the top and from the other side it will be held from the bottom, okay. which means actually it will be rigidly held. So, that it can move only in that direction, it will not wobble in that direction that is for rigidity you do that. This is the uniaxial accelerometer. So, this is the mass and you can see this this beam is the spring which holds to the top, this is the spring which is connected rigidly to the bottom. Now, to realize the capacitance, what you should do, you should do is you see there is a gap here between the top layer of the oxide and the bottom. I can bond a silicon wafer onto that like that. If you have missed it, you can see that the wafer is bonded from bottom. Now, you can see there is a gap between this mass and this bottom, that is the capacitance, and this is mechanically connected from this bottom plate is connected to the frame through this oxide. So, electrically isolated. Similarly, you can have one more wafer bonded from the top. So, this structure is complete. So, you have got this gap here which is about 2 microns, 2 microns this is one particular design and this mass size is 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter thickness is about 200 microns. Okay. This supposed to be low frequency big mass okay. and the flange size if you go back this is about 200 micron length, 50 microns wide and about 10 microns thickness that is the spring. So, this differential capacitor can be used for measuring the acceleration. Let us go back further, go further down that is a capacitor accelerometer. Okay. Now, let me go into a, a type of accelerometer which has which a 
which is realized by surface micro machining and capacitive sensing and differential capacitive sensing. So, here this is a very popular one well known AD XL series uh, commercialized by analog devices. They have spent several years to standardize several complications which they came across in fabricating this type of device. Now, they not only did fabricated this accelerometer, this is the top view of the accelerometer, they also made electronics along with that to convert uh, to obtain force balance uh, balancing circuit application system, force balance system is obtained using the electronics along with the sensor. So, what you have here is <coughs> a mass this is a top view with the hole, <coughs> the hole is you may recall that in all this surface micro machine structure you provide a hole. So, that you can etch the oxide below that and also it will provide damping, you can adjust the damping in that particular direction if required. So, this color here light green this is actually the proof mass that is the seismic mass, the mass of the spring mass system and the mass has got these 1, 2, 3 coombs on both sides, 6 coombs which are shown fingers. The mass has fingers on both sides <coughs> and the, <coughs> the size of the mass is about 40 microns wide, 380 micron length this is that for your information that type of ADXL 50 series. <coughs> okay. And you have got this mass supported by means of these 1, 2, 3, 4 beams which act as flexible flanges anchored in this black regions, 4 regions. That means, the mass cannot move in that direction, but mass can move in that direction because it is anchored there. So, when it is subjected to acceleration the mass can vibrate in that direction. Now, you can see these fingers are movable these I have shown only 3, 3, 6 <coughs> fingers supported by the mass and these fingers are actually there are 46 in the actual design 46 and width of that is about 4 micron gap okay. in between the two fixed beams there are two rigid or fixed combs they are anchored they are not moving A and B are the longer one and shorter one they are the two fixed beams. So, what happens is when this mass moves to the left okay, you can see this take a look at this B here B is fixed when the mass moves to the left okay, the gap between B and this this particular finger goes up that means the capacitance between them goes down. Okay. Now, that is because the gap between the two is decreasing. Similarly, A is fixed. So, if the mass moves to the left, the gap between the between the moving finger and the fixed finger A reduces. So, that capacitance goes up. Okay. So, if the mass is moving towards the left side, the capacitance between the finger A and the moving finger goes up capacitance between B, the finger B and moving finger goes down. Now, what is done in this design is all these fingers blue which are actually marked A I have shown only two of them they are connected together. Okay. Now, between finger A and this mass there is a capacitance. Okay. Similarly, this finger A and this mass there is this capacitance. So, lump put together I can put it as a capacitance C 1 between A and the ma mass, mass is that fingers between A and the mass that is between A and the fingers totally put together there will be capacitance C 1. And you can see if the mass moves to the left the capacitance between A and the mass with the mass moves to the left capacitance between the the gap between A and the mass goes down therefore, C 1 goes up. Similarly, 
all the shorter fingers which are fixed marked B and marked by red, they are all connected together like this. And the capacitance exists between the B and this moving finger. Each of them has their capacitance between the moving finger, that is the mass, that is C 2. So, if the mass moves to the left, the gap between the B and the moving mass uh, increases, C 2 decreases. So, here this is a lumped equivalent representation. Mass is movable one because of this one, these two are rigid, this moves to left, capacitance C 1 increases, C 2 decreases because the gap increases. Now, let us see how this is made use of for, so that is the principle of the capacitor. When this experiences a force to the left, okay, one of them increases, other one falls. So, the theme is to bring them back to a neutral position and find out how much voltage you will supply to bring them back to the neutral position and that will give you how much electrostatic force you must apply to bring it back to the neutral position and that electrostatic force exactly force neutralizes compensates the applied force. Okay. Now, let us just take a look at the structure. <coughs> This is the same structure, I will put it in a more detailed way. Now, the overall dimensions of this sensing element is actually 380 micron by 580 micron, this is very small and thicknesses, the thicknesses of the poly, this is a polycrystalline silicon, entire thing is made up of polycrystalline silicon, that will be about 2 microns. Now, you can see the thickness of this mass is very, very small and you can see the mass of this system is at least two orders of magnitude smaller than that of bulk micro machined mass that we saw, which was about 10 to the power of minus 8 kilograms. Here it is just about 10 to the power of minus 10 kilograms, much smaller. That means you can see the sensitivity will be lower, one thing, number two, the frequency will be higher compared to those masses. Okay. But here the swing constants also will be smaller, which will to compensate for the smaller mass because finally, it depends upon m and k ratio. <coughs> okay. So, these are the approximate parameters of this uh, thing and the vibrating frequency of that making use of that effective uh, the mass of this one and swing constant of 1.98 etcetera is 17 kilohertz, but the displacement cost by 1 g is 0.793 nanometers very, very small or 7.9 angstroms. So, the change in the capacitance is, is something like 62 octofarads, that is 62 to 10 to the power of minus 6 picofarads, very, very small. That means, you need on chip electronics for uh, sensing this. Okay. Now, let us just take a look at the uh, how this works. So, you can see this is the mass, this is the capacitance C 1, this is the capacitance C 2 you apply B A equal to plus D C B naught plus sin omega t on the bottom side exactly opposite phase type minus V naught minus V m sin omega t. <coughs> so, the voltage here will be at the center will be if it is V, v A and this is minus V A, the voltage at the center will be V A into C 1 minus C 2 by C 1 plus C 2. If C 1 equal to C 2 that is equal to 0, there will not be the voltage at the center if this is plus a and minus a, but if this moves up, okay, the d is the original gap, it moves up by x, new gap is d minus x, the capacitance c 1 will, will increase by epsilon 0 into area divided by d minus x. So, it reduces, so c 1 increases and c 2 will be epsilon 0 a by d plus x, c 2 falls. So, C 1 increases C 2 falls there will be therefore, there will be voltage which is actually C 1 minus C 2 into C 1 plus C 2 into V A, but that is the total voltage applied here. But if I put a capacitor here that will have the whole thing will be C 1 minus C 2 at this point will be C 1 minus C 2 by C 1 plus C 2 into V naught plus V m plus sin omega, v m sin omega t, but if I put a capacitor here the D C will be blocked and what you get V i here will be only the thin sidle quantity that will be C 1 minus C 2 by C 1 plus C 2 V m sin omega t. <coughs> okay. Now, 
Now, what you do is you amplify that signal and demodulate it, convert it into a DC, okay, you get a feedback voltage here. So, that feedback voltage will be actually when you because demodulator it will remove the AC component and then you will get through this you will get a feedback voltage which is actually you know, is actually whatever V i was there into gain that is A naught. Now, the V i here is actually when you substitute these quantities and when you take x equal to very small if you substitute the C 1 and C 2 in this equation here okay, V m size of modality remains there. So, when you substitute and take x less than d you will get this as V i is x by d into V m sin of modality that is the quantity there and feedback voltage what is applied d c now will be a naught into v m into x by d. Sin of gravity goes up, d c component a c component goes up. So, now you can see you are applying a plus voltage to that. Okay. So, what happens if I apply plus voltage here? That has a voltage already some voltage. Now, I increase this voltage with respect to that. That means, the difference in the voltage here will be reducing that means, the mass will be pushed back. Okay. So, if I apply plus here this is minus the difference in the voltage will increase therefore, this will be pushed back. So, the total force acting on this mass will be now force electrostatic force will be epsilon area into that is half C V squared by D half C V squared is energy half C V squared by D is the force the force is actually epsilon is 0 into V squared V is V naught original voltage that was the DC voltage minus the flat band voltage. So, on to this DC voltage was V naught minus the flat band voltage. So, the voltage decreases here and the bottom will be V naught plus flat band voltage that increases. So, total force acting will be on the top will be this quantity that by using half epsilon area into V squared by the gap squared minus this which is acting on the bottom electrode simplifying this you get electrostatic force in this quantity. Now, notice this force electrostatic force is also equal to applied force mass into acceleration. So, I equate, equate the exactly this quantity into mass into acceleration is whatever I have written here by simplifying this I have put here. So, then x by d will be I take the d squared on to that side I get d squared into m a divided by whatever is in numerator. So, you can see that displacement x by d is proportional to mass into acceleration. Now, it so in this everything is known now d m a everything is parameters of the accelerometer. So, x by d is a known quantity in fact, uh, if I, I can this is determined by these quantities if I know v f b I can determine x by d which gives me mass into acceleration. See if I know x by d I can find out the mass into acceleration that is the force, but x by d you can see from this thing here we saw x by d is related to v f b by a naught v m into d from the simplification feedback voltage. So, if I measure feedback voltage okay, I know v m is applied voltage there I can get x by d. So, measure feedback voltage and v m is known so x, x by d is known if I know x by d I know all a, m into a that is the force. So, you can see that by measuring the feedback uh, feedback voltage here required to bring the mass to back to the neutral position that is the ok that will be because it will be brought back to the neutral position that will give me an idea of I mean a measure of the acceleration ok. So, I just quickly run through this once more if you have not clear because I just uh, went through that quickly C 1 minus C 2 all these are understood this quantity may be the one that you may have difficulty this is half into capacitance is epsilon a divided by the gap. Okay. Energy is half C V squared this is a force half C V squared by D squared it to d I have got d minus x whole squared. Voltage applied is actually whatever d c voltage was there minus the feedback voltage because that is plus. So, that is why I get that quantity and in the other case 
on the bottom plates, this is plus voltage, this was minus V naught. So, the voltage that is applied is the force acting is minus V naught plus V f p. The difference is difference is sum of the two minus this is minus this is plus. So, difference V f p plus V naught V f b plus V naught divided by d f plus x whole square. Okay. That is why I get this one and I simplify this you get this entire thing like this. Okay. Now, I will just go through this here. So, using this I have found out just running through this again this is electrostatic force this I equate it to mass into acceleration that is what I have written here. And here x by d x divided by d is m a into d square take it on the other side divided by this entire quantity. Therefore, I get flat uh, uh, the feedback voltage is related to this relation by this I have seen right at the beginning. So, I can get knowing the feedback voltage I can get the acceleration. So, feedback voltage V f p is in directly proportional m a it can be used as a measure of acceleration. Okay. Now, let me just go through the applications very quickly. The micro machine, micro machine accelerometers can be used it can, by using the acceleration measurement some for some applications, some other application for by measuring the vibration frequency from the acceleration measurement vibration means actually the frequency we can measure the frequency which is actually root of k by m. So, it is determines what is the mass what is the k. Okay. Acceleration is a force. So, one of the very popular applications which is which this accelerometer is used is the airbag crash sensing. In most all the cars in America they have this uh, these uh, accelerometers which are used to deploy air balloon air okay, which will airbag not air, air, airbag means air balloon which will just open up when the car just decelerates or accelerates quickly or when it just hits and comes to abrupt uh, rest. So, this sudden deceleration will trigger the accelerometer which will trigger a voltage and open an actuator which will uh, deploy a balloon. So, that balloon will actually come if you are sitting in the front seat if you are sitting in the front seat the balloon will just open up and prevent you from hitting it. Or if your driver is sitting there the balloon if you will hit the uh, dashboard and that was the one which leads to the fatal uh, accident. So, to prevent that this airbag will block him from coming forward. So, that airbag is used in all the cars in the USA. In India also in several some of the cars which has come now. Okay. So, this is one of the applications and the, the accelerometer with the electronics force balancing circuit fabricated or made by uh, analog devices is used for this uh, airbag sensing that is the airbag crash sensing. And it can be used for other vehicle traction control systems. It is also used in the inertial measurement and navigation. For example, a, a missile or a inertial navigation system, you want to locate the position, you can use the accelerometer with the electronics. Acceleration will tell you what is the d squared x by d t squared integrate it once you get d x by d t integrate it twice you get x that is the position. So, the position can be tracked and accordingly the correction can be done in all these navigation systems or space applications etcetera these acceleration meters are very popularly where they are often used. Notice you need to have this very small size do not want to have very big because that adds on the payload of the uh, space ship spacecraft. This accelerometer also also used for biomedical applications. For pacemaker, okay, it will actually 
the pacemaker actually will give out a pulse okay just to keep the your pulse rate at required rate depending upon your physical activity okay so that is the uh, biomedical application then you can see you must put it under this it must be biocompatible you can't use a huge accelerometer you must choose a miniaturized accelerometer that's a micro machine accelerometers are definitely very popular for the biomedical applications space applications and even inertial applications okay and in the car also you need to have the small <coughs> other applications are vibration measurement the health health condition monitoring of the equipment, the engine can be monitored by measuring the frequency of vibration sensing the frequency if there is a defect generated in the engine the frequency of vibration will change that is one way of monitoring the uh, health of the machine or the engine very popularly used <coughs> then the other other applications will be in that it can be used anywhere even in civil applications where there is a, a support there is a crack you can sense it from the vibration minor vibration that are happening on the vehicle vehicle goes on the bridge and sense that uh, frequency of vibration of the accelerometer you can say the health about that. Other application very popular is you can see that this is called a seismic mass implying that you can use this for measuring very low frequencies. You can sense the earthquake that is the seismic activity can be sensed by using the accelerometers. So, those earthquake frequencies are very very low frequencies. So, you need large mass maybe for those applications bulk micro machined accelerometers are very popular very useful. These are some of the very uh, popular applications of accelerometer, shock, impact monitoring by changing the noting the frequency, and several devices for security reasons also can be made. You can think of many other applications, even for angle of incidence, etc. People use it. In summary, we have discussed static dynamic analysis of accelerometer, <coughs> and also we <it's> discussed <coughs> bulk micro machined and capacitor micro machined accelerometers, and I have presented the surface of micro machine capacitive micro accelerometer both bulk and surface micro machine and also we have used shown <coughs> how force balance system can be used for differential capacitive approach for micro machining. We have also pointed out some of the applications of acceleration uh, accelerometers for sensing acceleration and vibration. Thank you very much.